This tutorial is designed to get you familiar with GameCore's Object Spawner system. An Object Spawner is very useful for decorative elements in your project that repeat often in a random way. In the video, I use the standard of plant, but this can be used for all kinds of foliage, trash, posters, anything really that you can attach to a terrain layer and don't want to waste time hand placing. This video is the first time I show an inventory world because they are simply a must for good spawner management. Building an inventory world is a good practice to get into in general regarding game core development. It's a world where you place one copy of everything you plan on having in your project. Even on small projects, I tend to have many inventory worlds. I usually do one world for each set of like objects, things like buildings, signs, vehicles, and so on and so forth. This way you can edit an object in an inventory world and have GameCore automatically update each version of the object in your main project. I hope to avoid confusion, but I'll be flipping between the two worlds in the video. The main world is called blank.wld. The inventory world is blank inv.wld. I start out in blank.wld to show you the switch. So after I have the blank.wld loaded up, I save it and open up blank inv.wld. Both worlds are located in the same project. In the blank inv.wld, I have already added the object will be spawning. It's a simple shrub with a simple texture that I made really quick and included in this tutorial. Both the mesh and the texture are called Shrub01. My shrub has ugly pink boxes, so if you don't know why or don't know how to fix it, it would be best to review the surface tutorials. Once you have the proper texture showing up on the object, we need to set up a few surface options to make our shrub look good. Well, as good as you can with what I've given you. Under the basic tab of the pop out surface properties window, we have our friendly blend mode drop down. Since this texture uses an alpha channel, let's set the blend mode to alpha test. And now we're going to play with a new tab. In the same surface properties window is a tab labeled advanced. Go ahead and click it now. The advanced tab has three tabs of its own. The only one we'll be using is the options tab. Under the Options tab, you'll have a bunch of checkbox options you can activate. The two key ones here are the double-sided, which will cast the texture on both sides of the planes in the shrub object, and Alpha Test Dissolve, which will help eliminate the popping of spawned objects as they come into the depth of field. Now that we have our shrub looking okay, we need to prepare it to be spawned. As we all know by now, not all computer programs play nice with each other. So I will use GameCore's Geometry Exporter to prep the spawner for this reason. GameCore seems to play nice with GameCore. So select the shrub object and go to the Tools menu. Click Tools and then click Export Geometry. This will give you a dialog box asking you to name and save your exported .obj. When I'm exporting for a spawner, I call the object whatever its name was plus underscore export. In the video, this becomes shrub underscore export. GameCore will also want you to save out an associated .opr file. Just keep it named the same and in the same place as the exported shrub. So okay, let's save our inventory world and switch back to the main world, which is blank .wld. Okay, in our main world, we have our sky system enabled and a texture on the terrain. Let's enable the spawner now. Go to environments and then go to object spawner slash foliage. You will get the pop out spawner window. This window will have a list view and a bunch of properties options for controlling the spawner. Click the add button to add an object to be spawned. Now navigate to our shrub underscore export and open it. Under the properties section, the most important thing is the type. This can be confusing. What type is, is the name of the layer the object will be spawned on. It must match the layer name exactly 
or your object won't have a terrain type to spawn on. So in case we have a water surface and a layer one surface of our terrain, we will be spawning our shrubs on land. So type layer one into the type slot of the spawner window. And make sure you type it properly because it's case and space sensitive. Let's move on to the other properties. Max objects is set a little low at default. Change that to a much bigger number. I use 2500. Now max rotation is in degrees and represents the full spectrum of random rotation on your object. 360 means it can be spawned in any random rotation. Min and max scale is a random variety in size along the x, y, and z coordinates. I set the max to 3 and leave the min at 1. I also check align terrain to make the object snap to the ground and I unchecked fixed scale to use the random scaling. Now max distance is set at 10 which is basically useless for shrubs so let's turn that number way up. I used 500 to start. As soon as you input that number GameCore will bring you a shrubbery in fact, many. They're all clumped up on one edge of the terrain. So let's turn up the randomness to spread them out a little more evenly. Spacing controls the space between the objects. Play with the slider until you get the result that you like. You'll notice I had to turn the max distance up a bit to about 540 to get complete coverage on my terrain. I also check and uncheck the fixed scale options so that you can see how the object went from random scale to all scale the same. Want to add more objects? Just add to the spawner list and adjust the properties of the new spawner. Want shrubs to spawn on your grass terrain layer and rocks to spawn on your mountain terrain layer? Just make sure you set the spawner up with the correct terrain layer type name like grass for layer 1, rock for layer 2. Hate my shrub texture and have a much better one? Go back to your inventory world and swap the texture on the shrub object and they all change in your real world. Now that's the basics of the spawner. Your mind should be racing with all of the possibilities for spawned objects in your project. We'll go into a little more detail next and show off some other cool features to be used with spawners.